Hello and welcome to Mindful Biology. This is our fifth and final talk about creativity. We've been seeing how our digestive system harvests the raw materials and energy our bodies need to meet life and its challenges creatively. In this final episode, I'll be offering some brief meditations based on the material we've covered. Each meditation will be preceded by a short review. The meditations will be most valuable if you repeat them periodically. I believe they will help you connect with your own digestive process, your body's creativity, and with the earth from which our bodies grow. Let's begin. So we'll begin by considering the origin of food. We all know it comes from the earth. This is obvious when we speak of vegetables and other plant products, but it's also true when we speak of animal products, such as cheese or milk. Animals likewise eat food that grows from the earth. So when we eat any food, there is a very real sense in which we are ingesting the earth herself. We're familiar with how plants grow. From seeds, they rise up, growing toward the sun, absorbing the energy of sunlight, and drawing from the atmosphere for carbon dioxide, and from the soil for nutrients and minerals. We can meditate on the origin of food from the earth and how the food that is powering our bodies right now came out of this planet in which we evolved. I invite you to find a comfortable posture. Feel the support of the earth below. Notice the pressure points where the earth is holding up your body. Notice that the body has weight that makes these points of pressure feel as they do. That weight is due to mass derived from the foods that you have eaten both recently and in the past. Feel the mass of this body. Feel it as an outgrowth of the earth. Not only does the earth uphold the body, but it provides the substance that forms its mass. So feel the mass of the body as part of the mass of the earth. And feel the body as part of the earth. We're going to move on now and take our discussion further into the body, following the path that food follows from its entrance point at the mouth to its exit point down low below the pelvis. 
we're familiar with the form of a human body. This form is built from the foods that we eat, from the earth, as we have just meditated upon. And it enters the body and travels down a kind of tube that passes through it. We'll begin by looking at the upper opening of the tube, the mouth. We see mouths every day, our own and those of others. We know they have lips and gums and teeth and that there's a tongue and a palate. From the side, we can see even more anatomy. Within the tongue are complex muscles that enable the tongue's nimble movements. Above the tongue is the palate that separates the mouth from the nasal passageways. The interior of the mouth is moist because of liquid secreted from the salivary glands. And we have dentition that cuts and crushes food, beginning the process of digestion. We can meditate upon the mouth and its anatomy. What we find in meditation is a kind of cavern moist chamber of life. And this will be our second focus. Settling into that comfortable posture and feeling where the lips meet. Feeling how they can part to open the entrance, and they can connect to close. We can run our tongue along the hardness of the dentition and the softness of the gums. We can separate the teeth and slide the tongue out to feel the softness of the cheek. The tongue can push against the roof of the mouth, feeling the palate above. And the tongue can rest. It can settle into the floor of the mouth with the liquid that pools around it. And we can allow our awareness to really inhabit this moist chamber. We can imagine in our awareness that the mouth is much bigger because there is so much intimate connection of our awareness with this oral cavern that it can loom large, become very, very spacious. Allow your consciousness to reside within this protected cavern of life. And it's moist, soft interior. And we will continue following the path that descends down from the mouth into the stomach and the intestines.
So we have this tube that runs through the body. But it's not a simple tube, as shown here. It's more complicated. With the outpouching we call the stomach, the esophagus that runs from the mouth to the stomach, and the coils of intestines that connect the stomach to the rectum and anus. All this biology in the core of the body. For this segment, we'll focus particularly on the stomach by looking at how the digestive tube moves. A ring of contraction forms at the top of the stomach that we're looking at here. And that ring of muscular contraction then rolls downward, pushing the stomach contents down. And similar motions happen in the esophagus and the intestines. This ring of contraction that gathers and descends all this living, all this moving, has a kind of intelligence. Indeed, it is possible only because there is a complex network of hundreds of millions of nerve cells that support the vital organs in the body cavity. This is the enteric nervous system that is a companion and a partner to the nervous system region we call a brain. There's this inner bodily intelligence. Now when food enters the body at the mouth, it travels down the digestive tube, aided by the motions that we just saw. It goes down the esophagus, through the stomach, and all around the intestines. When it gets to the large intestine, or colon, the digesting food tends to slow down. And this allows for the microorganisms in the gut to, in effect, ferment the residual matter that has reached them. There are vast numbers of these microorganisms, primarily bacteria, that live within the intestines and especially the colon. There are many times as many bacterial cells in our digestive system as there are human cells in the whole body. And this is another source of intelligence, in this case, a wild, non-human intelligence in our own bodies. And we can meditate on this as well, all the intelligence of the neural network and the bacterial community. As you feel the support of the body and feel the mass that comes from and is of the earth, you can feel also the volume that fills the belly cavity from front to back, side to side top to bottom. Within that cavity is the intelligence of the intestinal brain and the intelligence of the bacterial community. So feeling the full experience of the belly its volume, 
any subtle gurgling or movement, any sensation of warmth. Allow your awareness to join the wilder intelligence that lives there. And perhaps offer a note of gratitude to all this living wisdom within. We're moving now to an area of the body about which there is often embarrassment and sometimes even trauma. Feel free to skip the meditation if it feels like it's not appropriate for you at this time. But when you are ready, please consider moving into this sensitive part of the body where waste exits in order to become more familiar with this very natural, very important region of bodily function. So one reason we feel embarrassed and uncomfortable with the part of the body between the legs where waste exits is the waste itself, this fecal matter. This material has a bacterial composition that is quite similar to the bacterial composition of soil. And indeed, it is closely associated with soil and easily mixes with it and enriches it. So this soil-like waste product, as we know, exits the body through the orifice we call an anus, controlled by sphincter muscles, and part of our regular experience. The waste or fecal matter is stored in the final region of the intestinal tube, referred to as the rectum. The rectum is a collecting chamber where fecal matter is held until the time comes for its release. Because the fecal matter is so similar to soil, we can think of it as being a local presence of earth within the body. So just as there is earth around our bodies, the atmosphere of the earth, all the growing things of the biosphere, the rocky crust below our feet. Just as there is earth outside the body, there is also earth within. We saw this in the case of food, and we can see it here at the other end of the digestive tube, where this soil-like material collects. The presence of this soil-like material in this sensitive part of the body can serve as a reminder of how rooted we are in the earth. And although it may be uncomfortable sometimes to connect with this area in meditation, there is real value in doing so when we are ready in order to gain the benefit of feeling more deeply and intimately rooted in our earth. In this meditation, begin by feeling the supporting points from the earth. Allow your body to settle into and imagine it becoming one with the planet below and the planet around us.
and then invite your attention to feel toward the area in which you feel fullness prior to needing to release waste back to the earth. That quality of fullness is very familiar to us and see how much of it is present in your body now. What you're feeling in that region of your body is very much like soil, as we have explored. Allow yourself to experience this sense of having material in that part of the body. To experience that quality of containing, to be a containing of earth. So a little bit of the earth is held in this body. So we can feel earth below and around the body, in the pressure points that hold us up, in the air that we breathe. And there is earth within the body especially in this sensitive area at the end of the digestive tube. Feeling earth within and earth outside. Allowing the whole body then to be a continuous experience of earth outside and in. Now I'd like to do one more meditation with you where we'll bring everything together and experience the whole digestive tube as one living form. So the tube, if we were to lay it on its side and stretch it out, bears resemblance to the ancestral life form from which we evolved. Hundreds of millions of years ago, some long slender creature lived in the sea, probably in the sediments at its bottom and had a tube passing down its body. The familiar organism we call an earthworm has a form that may be somewhat reminiscent of that early ancestor. The earthworm has a digestive tube shown in pink in the bottom image that runs from one end to the other. The digestive system we now possess is a descendant of that early ancestral form. We could meditate on how there is this inner, more primitive life form moving and living in each of us. So feeling the support of the earth below. And allowing the attention to begin at the lips and then move back to the line of gum and teeth. And then move back to the tongue and the pools of moisture. 
and then move back to the throat. And then perhaps with a swallowing action, moving down the esophagus to the stomach. And then in a more imaginary way, allowing the attention to flow from stomach down to the rectal container and letting it rest on the exit point, the anal orifice. And one more time from lips to the dental arch to the tongue and the liquid to the throat the esophagus the stomach region the intestinal region the rectal container and the orifice at the bottom. And one final time, lips, teeth, tongue, throat, esophagus, stomach, intestines, rectum, anus. As you move from top to bottom through the digestive tract with your attention, different parts may evoke different responses from your mind. And that can be noted but perhaps closing the meditation with another note of gratitude to this marvelous digestive system. I'd like to close by offering one final meditation to be practiced after watching this video, sometime when you're walking. So when we walk, we think of ourselves as walking upon the earth, but we could equally think of ourselves as walking within it. We are walking within the atmosphere, which is a layer of the earth. Going further, we could say that not only are we walking within the earth, we are walking as the earth. And thus the meditation could be to move through the earth, not as a person walking upon it, but as part of the earth herself, taking a walk. Each of us then is the earth walking.